What's the idea, Jean? You're early. You get canned? No, they're having inventory at the office. Moved up my lunch hour. Well, I got lamb stew today, and it's almost ready. That is, if you can stand the stuff. I hate it. <laughs> what? No cheese to play? Mister, if you don't smell it, we haven't got it. Yeah, I'll do that for you. The pleasure is all yours. You just put some java in that copper root. I know. Hey, go easy there. You think I'm plugging some radio program? <laughs> there. That smells pretty good. Yeah. Good and woolly. Take it away. All right, do you have a pencil? Thanks. Will you stop prowling through that newspaper and eat your lunch? This is important, too. Huh. Sounds pretty good. What is it? Wanted young man for live wire sales proposition. And this job offers solid future with plenty of chances for advancement. You're just wasting your time marking up ads for that Larry Harrison. He isn't interested in finding a job or one finding him. Cora, why don't you like Larry? Here's the want ad page from yesterday's paper that you marked up for him. He walked out of here without even taking a peek at it. He probably forgot it. Don't you suppose if he really wanted a job, he'd look through the ads himself without waiting for you to mark them up for him? I know it looks bad. But I have faith in him. Sure you have. There are always some women that think men are on the level. I'm sorry, Cora. I guess I'm just not hungry today. I knew you couldn't go for that mutton. Pardon me, lamb. Well, oh, I couldn't tell the difference. It tastes fine. Try a piece of this apple pie. No, thanks, Cora. I, I really have to be going. Say, you're not sore at La Belle Cora, are you? Of course not. I don't think you mean half of what you say. You know, Cora, I'm very much in love with Larry. He's my whole life. Yeah, we dames are all alike. I've tried to bust out of one of those fogs myself. for Larry's lunch. Shall I give him this? Yes, I marked that ad for him. I won't forget everything you've said. Well, I hope you'll never have cause to remember it. You know, if I didn't know you so well, I'd say you were just an old grouch. Goodbye. Larry! Well, hello, honey. Hello. Think I'd run off with your car? Well, as a matter of fact, I thought you had. Well, I have to look into a deal like I told you last night. What happened? I'll tell you tonight at dinner. That is if it goes through. Of course it will. Yeah. Darling, I have to run back to the office. I'll see you later, huh? Wait a minute. You can have the car. I don't need it. What about the deal? Well, I'm going to meet him downtown. Better have your lunch. I told Cora. Listen, this is the last lunch you're ever going to have to buy me. After today, everything's going to be different. I know it will. Bye-bye, honey. Goodbye, darling. Maybe you better check the gas. The uh, slot will be low. Bye. Bye. Hi, Sister Cora. Well, how's my little sweetheart today? Hmm? Oh, you mean Ah, oh, you're just bashful, that's all. Well, the Harrison private table. Very nice. Can I get you some soap and water? No, oh, that's all right. What'll it be, my little financier? Cora, look at me. Do you realize that you get more and more beautiful every day? Skip it, Romeo. How about some boiled lamb? You recommend it? I cook it. Well, then it's good enough for me. In case your appetite ain't what it ought to be, you can sharpen it up on these want ads. I thank you, I thank you. Oh, that's interesting. Cora, what's a five-letter word for lazy? <laughs> That's a cinch, Larry. No, I'm sorry, but it won't work. You're telling me. Yeah, and I'm telling you something else. I'm putting over a big deal this afternoon, and what I mean is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Two seventy-six. 
How much a caviar? Caviar, that's 37 cents. That's a special. But uh, we've got some real Russian caviar. That's 450 a jar. Nothing but the best. 450, 270. That'll be 726 altogether. Okay. You got anything smaller than 50? No, I'm sorry. They don't come smaller for me. Well, I guess I can make it. Uh, hey, uh, thanks very much. You bet. I'll put this in the bag, please. Is this Miss Jean Forrest's apartment? Uh, yes. I have a couple of packages for you, ma'am. Just bring them in, boy. Put them right there. There you are, and that will be COD. Here's your money. <laughs> <laughs> what, no tip? Oh, a very, very small one. Come on, give a look. What goes on, an early Christmas? Look, imported caviar, imported cheese, and some uh, cocktail sausages, just a few appetizers, you know. Appetizers? We always have an appetite. Well, you're going to need a especially big one tonight because we're going to celebrate. Celebrate? Mm -hmm. Larry, it's a deal. Did you put it over? Yeah, just like that. Oh, darling. Please sit down and tell me what happened. Now, tell me all about it. Well, it's with a big lumber company up in Winnipeg. Yeah. You think you're going to like living in Canada? When do we leave? Hey, wait a minute. When do we eat? Who wants to eat at a time like this? Well, I do. Come on. We'll have a little snack and a glass of beer, and then we'll have dinner. Downtown? Mm-mm. At Chorus. I thought you said we were going to celebrate. We are. That old dame's taking enough cracks at me. Now it's my turn. Ah. <laughs> Don't be mean to poor old Cora. No, I'm not. I got it all planned out. I think I'll tip her five bucks. You're an old meanie. Come on, get out the dishes while I do this. Huh? A little something for you. Huh? Hey, that's the last time that that old dame is going to... Larry! Oh, Larry, you know the landlady charges me 25 cents a piece for these plates. Let's see, I broke three plates, that's 75 cents, so oh, well. We better make it an even buck. Larry! <laughs> I give up. Wait till I really start spending. Wait till I really start managing. News flashes from your air reporter. A payroll truck was held up this afternoon at the Southern Grain Company warehouse. The daring bandit killed one of the drivers and escaped with $9,000 in cash. Fred Thompson, victim of the bandit, died an hour ago in the hospital, and the police have thrown a dragnet around this community in an attempt to capture the killer. It is impossible at this time to... I think that this phone is out of order. Do you mind calling me back? Yes, thanks. Yeah, the number's 9127. Thank you. Remember, this was your idea. You better like it. Yeah, I'll get that. See, this looks swell. <laughs> Hello. Hey, this is Larry Harrison speaking. Oh, hello, Jim. I was just going out to dinner. Sure, I'll meet you any place you say. Glenby would... Glenby is about 25, 30 miles from here, isn't it? Well, I'll meet you there first thing in the morning. What, what are you kidding? What do you mean tonight? Well, sure, I want the job, but... Well, all right, j j just a minute. What is it, Larry? Well, it's this friend of mine that helped me get the job. He's down in Glenby with a representative of the company I'm going to work for. They want me to start for Canada tonight. Well, darling, do whatever they want you to. Well, I'm not going to leave without you. I'd like to see you try it. And a girl. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Listen, you see that cloud of dust rolling into Glenby right now? Well, that's me. Sure, I'm on my way right now. Okay, Jim. Come on, honey, we're off. Go on, pack your things. Well, not so fast. We haven't had anything to eat. Well, we'll eat on the way. I've got to call the boss and tell him I'm quitting. He wouldn't call you if he was going to fire you. Well, I'm going to call him anyway. Besides, that'll take me a couple of hours to pack and get ready. I promise, Jim. Honey, you better take the bus to Glenby. 
I'll come down in my car later on. I'll be there by midnight. All right, we'll do it that way. I'll meet you at the railroad station in Glen. All right. Larry. Yeah? Isn't it wonderful the way everything's working out for us? You're happy. Terribly. I'll have a minister all staked out by the time you reach there. And don't forget. Station? Glen. Midnight. All right. Lady, you having trouble? Yes, I'm out of gas. Well, you are in a tough spot, ain't you? How far is the Glenby? About a mile. You want a lift? Oh, that'd be fine. Where'll I get my bags and keys? You from Glenby? No, I'm not. Oh, just visiting, huh? Uh huh. How long are you going to be there? Well, that all depends on how soon you get me there. Smoke? No, thanks. Have some gum. No, thank you. Say, ain't you got no bad habits at all? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chief. When's the Nicholas Bond train due in? 1.30. Okay, I want two tickets and an upper and a lower from Winnipeg. How much left me? Let me see. You better... Wait till I find out where Winnipeg is first. Joe, here's a new list of the serial numbers and the bills that were stolen in that grain company holdup this afternoon. Seems some of the numbers were wrong on the first list, but this one's okay. Just put it there. Can't you see I'm busy? That'll be $210. Uh, well, that uh, seems kind of steep, don't it? Railroad's only got one price, mister. Well, I'll think it over. Hey, you got plenty of time. Train ain't due for an hour yet. You know, you're a smart-looking girl. I bet you'll be smart enough to even catch a fellow like me. Well, that is if you want it, Joe. You flatter me. Well, there's no harm in trying. Well, thanks so much for the ride. Now, wait a minute. Don't go away mad. Listen, sweetie, why don't you and I go over to that roadhouse across the way and have a little fun, huh? No, thank you. Oh, come on. You know, I ain't a bad fellow. You can ask my mother. Will you please let me out of here? Now, what's the matter with you? You've been around, haven't you? Oh! Ah, huh? Well, that's the way I like it. Hey, what's the idea, you oh. Tough guy, huh? You're under arrest, both of you. Get back in that car, Judy, and you too. Please, we didn't do anything. Shut up, you, and get in the car. Now, wait a minute, you. You drive. Well, come on, hurry up. All right, all right. Larry! Larry, let me have it! Give me that. Let me have it! Come on, give me that gun, you. Give me that gun, I tell you. Come in. What's trouble, Haskins? Plenty. Ah, uh, lucky you got her before she could use that gun. Call the sheriff. Smacking down a copper is bad business. Even if he did get fresh with a girl. Yes, but you can't find a jury in the world that'll convict me on that. Jury? <laughs> Where do you think you are? 
It costs the county a lot of money to keep juries handy. You make it tough on the court, and the judge makes it tough on you. Now, if you want a jury trial, you've got to dig up enough cash for your own attorney. And that bunch of lawyers from the state will be taking your fingerprints, finding out, looking up everything you've ever done since you was born. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I have been in a couple of jams, but of course it was nothing serious. But I guess you're right. Well, what do you do? Just plead guilty, that's all. The judge will give you six months or so on the Sunny Grove prison farm. Place isn't anything to write home about. Save you time and money. It's the easy way out. You take my word for it. I've been in this jail three times. Plead guilty, huh? Don't you think you'd better eat a little breakfast? I don't care for any breakfast. I just want to get out of here. You'll be seeing the judge pretty soon. Yes, and when I tell him what really happened, he'll pin a medal on Larry for beating up men. I sure want to thank you for sending that pair up, Your Honor. You know, six months at Sunny Grove Farm will teach him to respect the law. Well, now your request had nothing to do with my decision. I never believed a word of their story, Haskins. The girl proved she was lying when she staged that fake hysterical act. Sure. Say, that was funny, wasn't it? Yes, it was rather amusing. <laughs> <coughs> uh, you better run along now. I've got work to do. All right, Judge. I'll be seeing you. Dear Cora, the car is on the highway a mile out of Glenview. I didn't have time to get gas and go back. Larry and I had to catch the train. The switch key is enclosed, so please get the car and I'll write you later. Lovingly yours, Jean. Hello, Dave. Hello, Cora. Don't tell me you brought a bill collector after me. Now, wait a minute, Cora. This is serious. This man wants to talk to you. You know Dave, of course. Sure I know him. What's wrong with him? Do you know anything about that Southern Grain Company holdup yesterday? Only what I read in the paper. Mm. Well, a fellow walked into Dave's shop late yesterday afternoon and passed one of the bills. Now, this guy might be the killer. Yeah, and the more I got to thinking about it, as I told the officer here, I kind of remember seeing that fellow and a girl come in here to eat quite often. He's a kind of a talky, loud-mouth guy. Loud-mouth? That puts all my customers under suspicion. Well, do you mind if I drop back tonight and do a little comparing of notes? Not at all, brother. Not at all. Thank you. Bye. wondering if old Bradby ever got over the stomach aches he used to have. <laughs> Bradby? Yeah. You like Bradby. Oh. He's the big boss of Sunny Grove. Yes. Every time a hen looks at him, she lays a bad egg. Oh. <laughs> Conrad, the superintendent wants to see you about putting some of these men back to work. I see. Tell him I'll be right over. Okay. You sent for me, Mr. Bradby? Oh, yes, doctor. How are your patients? I'm getting along fine. It was undoubtedly a case of tomaine poisoning. Just occurred to me that a little fresh air and exercise might do the boy some good. 
If I thought they needed that, I'd prescribe it, Mr. Bradley. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to do a little prescribing myself. We need men. I just signed a contract to deliver a large shipment of lumber. It must be cut. I can't discharge any of those men from the hospital just yet, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Here you talk, you think they were dying. I'm sure Mr. Haskins can find some comparatively light tasks for your patients. They're not leaving the hospital. They're no longer confined to their beds, are they? No, sir. Then they're able to work. You're forgetting, Mr. Bradley, that those men have brains. Rotten food, terrible quarters, and killing labor do things to their minds. <sighs> I'll never understand why the state didn't send me a doctor who'll keep prisoners fit to work, instead of wasting time trying to see what makes the wheels go round on their heads. And over all that before. You're running one of the worst prison farms in the country here. What's the most profitable? We're making money for the state here in Sunny Grove. Yes, by turning men and women into savages. <laughs> words, Doctor, words. Goldie, what do you think of the doctor, huh? I don't blame you. Well, how about it? Do I get those men? No, sir, you do not. Yes, come in. The new prisoners are here, sir. Well, in that case, I won't need your men, Doctor. That is, for the time being. All right, have them lined up in the yard. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Doctor? Is it sad you to see new prisoners arrive? I'm not especially cheerful about it. Why not? Give you more sick minds to play with. Can't you give a lady a hand? Move along. Get in line. All right, men, line up here. All right, come on, come on. Well, Shifty Sue, here again, huh? Yep, I sure keep you busy. Don't I, Warden? <laughs> I want you men and women to pay close attention to what I'm going to say. You're here because you violated the law and you owe a debt to the state. You're going to pay that debt with work. Long, hard work. Most of you are first-timers. You may find it easier if you know what the score is. There's no parole here and no time off for good behavior. But there's plenty of time on for bad. Remember that. Take them away. All right, men, this way. Women, that way. Larry! Oh, no, oh, brace up, kid. Don't take it that way. None of that, you two. Wait a minute. What's the trouble here? Your husband? No, but we're going to be married. Oh, you're going to be married. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it'll be some little time before that wedding takes place. <laughs> Pipe down, you mugs. Quiet. Now, pull yourselves together. A little hard work will straighten out all your difficulties. All right. Come on, get in line. All right, this way. Put your clothes in this and write your name on the tag. Keep moving. Put your clothes in this and write your name on the tag. Over there. Put your clothes in this and write your name on the tag. Put your clothes in this and write your name on the tag. Take your time, boys. You know you've got all day. Put your clothes in this and write your name on the tag. Put your clothes in this and write your name on the tag. Hi, Shifty. Welcome home. Hi, Livelip. You have been to Sunny Grove before? I helped lay the cornerstone. This is my fifth trip up here. I know every rat hole in the place and every rat that lives in it. <laughs> Come on, Shifty. Get a move on. You better get used to it, kid. You're gonna wear it a long time. Don't pay no attention to her. Listen here, you poor, ignorant she-criminal. The trouble with you is you don't know ladies when you see them. She don't belong here. Just love brought her in this place. Boy, that love stuff's dynamite. Ha, ha, ha. You ought to know. What happened to you? Well, we campfire girls are giving a party. And I got in a mix-up with the Boy Scout over his knife. He got the knife and I got two years. All right, girls. Line up. Come on. Leave your bags there. Come on. I will now explain the work routine at Sunny Grove. You work a week in the sewing room, a week in the kitchen, a week in the laundry. You follow the schedule as long as you behave yourselves. Mrs. Ames will now take you to the hospital for an examination. Follow me, Gil. Come on. Wait in there. Your turn next.
Fill out one of these cards, please. This is a case record. Please fill it out. Yeah, this will save time. It is a little silly, isn't it? Now, what's your name? Jean Forrest. Jean Forrest. Your age, last birthday? 21. Married? No. What, what? Now you're going to say something. What was it? The judge wouldn't believe me when I said it. The superintendent here sneered at me when I said it. Why should I say it again? I'll believe you. And I won't sneer at you. I'm not married. But I was going to be. Oh, I see. Well, six months isn't such a long time. I'm sure he'll wait for you. He's here, too. Oh. Your parents? Dead. You ever have the measles? Yes. I had them, too, when I was a kid. I thought they were swell. I didn't have to go to school. There's several more questions. Why don't you sit down? I'll stand. Well, I don't know whether you're guilty or innocent of the charges that brought you here. Whether you are or not doesn't matter now. You're here. If you fit in with the place, they'll take you for granted after a while and let you alone. But if you don't... They'll punish me. I suppose I'll get something for refusing to fill out my card. All right, go ahead. Well, I'm a doctor, not a jailer. I wish you'd understand that. You're part of this place. It'll be all this for us. Keep working down there. Ah, all spick and span, eh? I'll fix that. Well, well, look who's here. Small world, ain't it, Harrison? How's the girlfriend? You bring her along? We'll be seeing a lot of each other. Take them away. see anything. You're in tough shape. Your look work's killing me, that's what. It's killing me. Oh, you got more lives than a cat. Yesterday you was dying from mosquitoes. Last week from flies. Last month, all something else. Make up your mind. What's eating you anyway? I know what's eating me, see? I know what's eating me. It's my business. All right, don't get sore. What do I care what's eating you? Come on, Mr. Harrison. Get tired. Now listen, what's the idea? You're always picking on this guy. What did he ever do to you? Shut up, you. Yeah, go ahead and tell him, Haskins. Go ahead and tell him what I did to you. Get on that pig. Hey, Haskins! 
Ah, uh, what's the matter now? Uh, a couple of busted fingers. Mitchell! I don't to teach you a lesson how to get nervous when you're holding a drill. Take him out of the hospital. Let's Dr. Conrad baby him a little. Come on. Come on, hurry it up. I know just the guy to hold that drill. Harrison, come here. Did you hear Haskins call you? Come on up. You know, Harrison, I've been thinking it's a pity to waste a fellow with your ambitions on a pick and shovel. So I found something special for you. Ah, you see this old drill? Of course, you get a hold of it like that, see? All you have to do is give it a little turn every time these guys... Very simple. You don't get nervous. Of course, the other fellow lost his nerve. Had a couple of fingers. I hop to it. For Haskins gang. Shifty, roll that food out for Haskins gang. Will you leave, Mademoiselle? Shifty, let me take it. What for? I want to ask him about Larry. All right, but be careful they don't catch you talking to him. I'll watch it. All right. How's Larry? Are you all right? Sure, except Haskins has it in for him. Tell Larry I can't stand it there much longer. Tell him I'm going to do something. Don't lose your head, Jeff. Forrest! Yes, Miss Brand? You were talking to that prisoner. I was just asking you. About him. that man of yours. You don't need to tell me. Miss Ames, I'm going to report you to Superintendent Bradby. I didn't do nothing. Don't talk back. What is it, Miss Brand? Put her to work in the laundry. Come on, Forrest. Shifty, yes, take ma'am. these things out. Yes, ma'am. Ciao. We're about to have lunch, Mr. Harrison. Won't you join us? Say, how much longer do I have to hold that drill? Mm, I don't know. Fun, ain't it, huh? <laughs> You're trying awful hard to make me break out of here, aren't you? That the way you got us figured out? Sure. Sure, if I make a break, you track me down with your dogs and shoot me in the back. But I ain't breaking out. I'm staying here, no matter how tough you make it for me. Well, you're just crazy about Sunny Grove, ain't you? Yeah. You got no idea how crazy I am about it. I was talking to your girl in the kitchen. What'd she say? She said to tell you she couldn't stand it much longer. Listen, you tell her to stay in line. You tell yeah, her I won't be able to tell her nothing. The matron caught us talking. She got sent to the laundry. All right, let's get back to work. All right, up and be... And take me off of this, will you? I won't make no more trouble. Honest, I won't. Get back to work. Well, Shifty, you've decided to do a little work for a change. Keep it up. And maybe I'll take you out of the laundry. Goody. Then maybe next year I'll make the boiler room. Just a minute, Miss Grant. Look. Where do these come from? Oh, <laughs> I guess I just got them. That's not true, Miss Brant. This is part of yesterday's wash. Why, you dirty little stool pigeon, I'll... Stop it, Shifty. Tomorrow, you take over the back buster. I'll teach you to lie. <laughs> Why are you so far behind? I don't know. I'm just... You'll stay right here to finish. When you learn to do your quarter in regular hours, you won't have to work overtime. Hey, 
says to him, listen, mister, I'd marry you in a minute if I didn't have to go to the penitentiary next week. Well, I did. That stop him. <laughs> ah. hmm. Say, what's the matter with you, Dane? Ain't you got a laugh left in you? Oh, I guess I wore myself out laughing the first four or five times I came up here. Oh. Better lay down, kid. Come on. Come on. Easy does it. Did you eat anything tonight? Yeah. Cornbread and coffee. I'd like to get my hands on the guy that invented cornbread. Yeah, I guess for this time you'd like to get your hands on any man. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. What is it? Sunny Grove Beauty Cream. I copped it in the kitchen. Lord. You're swell. All of you. Sure we are. We're going to start embroidering handkerchiefs for the matron. Oh, yeah. We don't realize how lucky we are to be here. Scram, you two, and give her a chance to rest. Okay. Hmm. It's tough. Mighty tough on a kid like you. Yeah. It's tough on all of us. Well, oh, it don't matter so much about me. I've been coming here long enough to get a pension. Sue. Yes? You think I could see Larry? Now, don't start that again. It must be mighty comforting to know that your boyfriend's up here at the same time that you are. It's just like being in different worlds. Now, what's the difference? Husbands, wives, and sweethearts should all be in the jail at the same time. Then you don't have to worry about what they're doing. You'll know. What's the matter, honey? I've got to see him. But you can't do nothing about it now. You just have to wait. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to see him. You can't do that, kid. They'll put you in solitary. What they do to me? You've got to listen to me. You'll go, Horace. Shifty. Come on. You go, Come on. Horace. Shifty. What's all this noise about? Forrest is going to a movie, and she won't take us. Making more trouble, Forrest? Remember, if we can't tame you with overtime, we've got other ways. Attention, everybody. Due to the increase in the number of male prisoners... Ah, that... now we're getting somewhere. Shut up. And the need for additional work clothes. Oh. The laundry, beginning tomorrow, will work two additional hours daily, starting at 6 a.m., and stopping at 7.30 p.m. C.R. Bradby, superintendent. <laughs> For half a cent, I'd smack that matron right in the kisser. You wouldn't have the nerve. No. Watch me sometime. for you, you'll get back to work. That pudding whistle means nothing in this laundry anymore. We work until 
that's what you think. Are you going to get back to work or not? No! Begging your pardon, madame, but us ladies is striking. In fact, we've struck. <laughs> I'm warning you. I'll call Superintendent Bradbury. Go ahead. Get old Bradbury down here and we'll wash him too. And if you ain't dressed, here's some pants. <laughs> Bay orders if it takes a week. Keep an eye on them till I get back. Yes, Miss Friends. Hey, let's give the See you. You better go right in. Don't think you can stay in there all night. Would you mind waiting out there? Did it brought you to kid? No. I'm all right. Me too. I'm just where I want to be. On the way out. Don't say that, Shifty. Everything's going to be swell. Sure it is. <laughs> I'd just like to get a squinted. Maitland's pain. <laughs> when she finds out, I ain't gonna be back at the laundry. Be quiet, Sue. Save your strength. I don't need no. This is the easiest way I ever got away from a joint. about it now, Forrest. But they killed her. She was only standing up for her rights. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm 
sorry. You've lost a good friend. You know, it's, it's strange that a woman like Sue, who was always getting into trouble, would, would recognize that you were worth knowing. She liked you, Forrest. I think she understood you. Yes. Yes, I think she did. I don't know what I'm going to do if there was other. There must be someone on the outside who'd understand, like Sue. Somebody who might help you. I can't let anyone know I'm in prison. We ruin our chances. We get out. Well, the longer you're here, the more you'll need the right person to talk to. To help keep your thinking straight. Don't you some friend who, who you can trust? Could come to see you on visitor's day? There's Cora. She'd understand. Well, suppose we get Cora up here. I'll send her. What's her name? I mean, her full name. Mrs. Cora Waxley. Mrs. Cora Waxley. And what happened to Jean? That's all right. Doc Conrad patched her up. It's a nice mess. Bradley's going to give up plenty for this. Well, don't you worry. Dr. Conrad will make him go easy with her. What do you mean? What's Doc Conrad got to do with it? Come on, spill it. Hey, Larry. They got your girl working on the backbuster. The backbuster? Yeah, and if she burn up about it, she's ready to wreck the joint. Uh, she's got to quiet down. I got to get her back in line. But how? I'm going to see Haskins. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're in bad enough with Haskins already. Lay off. He'll see me, all right. Hey, put that stuff away. I'll only take it away from you. Billy, I've got to see Gene. Now, wait a minute. Don't ask Haskins anything. Right. You've got to forget things in a joint like this. Besides, if Haskins wait, we get you anyhow. Hey, Haskins! Haskins! Hey, Haskins! Cut it out! What's going on in here? i got to talk to you. Oh, I get... Now, wait a minute, will you? It's awful important. i got to talk to you. All right, talk. I want to see my girl, Jean Forrest. Oh, I suppose you want to take her on a picnic or go dancing, huh? She got mixed up in that laundry scrap. I want to tell her to lay off the rough stuff. She'll listen to me, see? Yeah, that's what you think. She's only listening to Doc Conrad these days. Oh, you got to let me see you. Got to, huh? <laughs> that's funny. Why, uh... Oh, no, wait. I'll do anything. I'll work harder, longer hours. Now, you'll do that anyhow. Wait, wait, wait. Come here. I got money. Why, I ought... I think I'll let the warden talk to you. Come on, get in here. $15. Why, I ought to punch you in the nose. Fifteen dollars. Twenty, then. Just don't let me talk to her. You can go along with me, see? You're not taking any chances. No, not for twenty bucks, I ain't. All right, then, I'll give you twenty-five dollars. That's all I've got. Where you got this money? Right here. Why, this is only 25 bucks. That's what I said, 25. Ah, oh, no, you told me you'd give me all you got. What do you got in another hand? Well, it's a $10 bill. It's going to last me till I get out of here. It's cigarette money. Yeah. Smoking's no good for you. Not with the hard work you got to do. Come on. Listen, give me back that 10 bucks. I want to see your girlfriend, don't you? Stuff. It's all over the place how you got tough. Now, you can't do that here and get away with it. I can't stand it here, Larry. I can't stand it. Now, don't talk like that. You've got to stand it, and so do I. But don't do anything that'll get us in more of a jam. 
place is driving me crazy. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's only for a short time more. We've both got to hold on. I'll try, Larry. That's a good girl. I sent for Cora. You sent... You what? I sent for Cora. She's coming up on visitor's day. Who would you do that for? You want to spill everything? Cora's my friend. Yeah, but she isn't mine. I told you not to tell anybody that we were here. I know, Larry, but Dr. Conrad thought Dr. She... Conrad? So what is all this Dr. Conrad stuff? He said that if she can't... I don't care what he said. Now, from now on, you listen to me and nobody else. And you stay in line, because I mustn't be found. You understand? What do you mean, Larry? Come on, Doc! I got something else to tell her. I said, Doc, somebody's coming! Now, don't forget, you keep your mouth shut. Larry! Get back to work, you... Yeah, I've always said it. A woman can sure cause a guy a lot of trouble. I'll lay off, will you? Hey, look, Haskins. I want to make you another proposition. Full of propositions, ain't you? I want to be made a trustee. Now, ain't that nice. What do you think rates you being a trustee? What do you think? Money. Thought you told me you only had 35 bucks. You make me a trustee right away and I'll give you 200. Where's this still coming from? Well, what's the difference? You fix me up, and I'll give you the cash. When? Well, I'll have a friend bring it to me next visitor's day. Well, how am I sure they'll bring it? Don't you worry. It'll be here. No, I'll let you worry. Tell you what, make it 250, and I'll do it. Okay, 250. You know, Harrison, I'd hate to be in your shoes if you're pulling any tricks. Go on in the bunkhouse. Waxley. I'm glad you could come. Sit down. Is Jean sick? No, not exactly, but she needs somebody to talk to. I think she's, well, a little bitter. Well, who wouldn't be? If I was Jean shut up here, I'd kick holes in things. I'd really go to town. Yes, that's just what she did. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Doctor. I'll bet my whole lunchroom against the stale donut that that girl doesn't belong here. And I think you'd win your bet, Mrs. Waxley. Oh, call me Cora. Make me feel more at home. Bad enough being all dolled up like this. All right, Cora. Yes? Forrest is here. Send her in. I'm going to leave Jean in your hands for a while. Cora. Oh, Cora, darling. I'm so glad to see you. If you'll pardon me, I think I'll get out. There's no need to hurry. You have plenty of time. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Cora. What have they been doing to you in this dump? Cora. I want you to tell me all about yourself. And boy, have I got a lot to tell you. Well, how did it go? Okay, but she is pretty upset. You mean more than she was? Well, it's a different kind of upset now, if you know what I mean. No, I'm afraid I don't. It's that no good Larry Harrison. What's he done? Plenty, and lots of it. I think you better get in there now and see what you can do for her. Well, I must be going, Doc. I'm late for my supper trade now. Goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye, Cora. Well, how do you feel after your talk? That's better, thank you. May I ask a favor? Well, you might take a chance. I want to see Larry Harrison. No? It's very important. Well, I think it can be arranged. It's Dr. Conrad. Find Lawrence Harrison and send him over to my office right away. Come in, Harrison. What is it? I don't know. Oh, hello, honey. What have they got us up here for? I had Dr. Conrad send for him. I want to talk to you, Larry. Talk? Sure, I'd be glad that... Please. What's the matter? Larry, I want the truth. Why were you in such a hurry to get to Glenby the night we were arrested? On account of my job. I had to see that... Was it because of a payroll robbery? Payroll robbery? 
$9,000 was stolen, and a man was killed. That's well, too bad. What's it got to do with me? Larry, did you steal that money and kill that man? <laughs> this place sure has you on edge. I don't even know what you're talking about. But you know about that $50 bill you passed at the market near Cora's, don't you? Now, wait a minute. What is this? Cora just left here. Oh, she did. The car's been shooting off a trap again, huh? What else she tell you? The police came to her place looking for you. Well, they did. Well, all right, so the cops picked up that belt. What else they know? Nothing. We got nothing to worry about. Don't say we learned. Oh, so that's it, huh? Well, what do you think I pulled that job for? It's for you. Sure. I'll buy you some new clothes, show you some of the world. I never asked you for those things. I don't want them now. No. No, all you want to do is hand me up, is that it? No, Larry. I'm giving you a chance to hand yourself up. Oh, no. Oh, no, not me. Not after what I've been through. And remember this before you spill anything. You're in this just as deep as I am. And try and make the cops believe anything different. I'm giving you until tomorrow to turn back that money and make a clean breast of everything. Now get out. If you open your trap before I get out of here, you take this wrap with me. Remember that. Get out. Hey, what's the matter with you? I'm getting out of here by morning. You've got to get out. Uh, you better think that over a couple of times. There's a graveyard here full of guys who had to get out. Ah, uh, go to bed. No, not yet. See you later. Yeah, I know. First you want to be a trustee. Now you're getting ambitious. Want to drive one of them daylight trucks, huh? Yeah, first one out in the morning. That's the one that goes by the railroad station. Yeah, I know. Uh, you wouldn't, uh, by any chance, be figuring on leaving this, would you, Harrison? <laughs> you know me better than that. Yeah, I guess I do. But I'm still waiting for that 250 to major trustee. Now, this truck business will cost 250 more. Now it's your turn to talk. That makes 500 bucks. You'll have it all before morning. First, you gotta get it. Where? No, I'll get it all right. I said, where? Well, I got a friend bringing it to me. Oh, on, friends don't bring money, they borrow it. I'm telling you, you'll have it before daylight. And I'm telling you, if I don't, you won't be on that truck. And you're through being a trustee. You know what that means. That's fair enough. It's still a deal. Okay, beat it.
So that's the friend who was bringing the dough, huh? You wanted 500 bucks. All right, here it is. No. I'm in favor of an even split, Harrison, 50-50. The deal was for 500. That's all you're going to get. You know, you're not in a very healthy spot to dictate. I've changed my mind. Hand over all of it. What is this, Haskins? Harris was making a break. Get Dr. Conrad, quick. Come on, give me a hand. Get him over there on the table. Put a blanket under his head. Did you have to shoot him? Well, it was him or me. He was getting away. Too bad, Harrison. He shouldn't have tried this. Over here, Doc. His left side here. Pretty badly hurt, Harrison. Yeah, I know, Doc, I know. Hey, Bradby. Yes, yeah, right here. I'll trade you some, some hot information for a cigarette. I'm, I'm wanted for murder and robbery. You didn't know that, did you, huh? What about Jean? She doesn't know anything about it. Go on. I pleaded guilty at Glenby, so I could get in here. I had to have a hideout. What did Jean have to do with that? Nothing. She took that gun away from me. She was afraid I was gonna shoot Haskins. I let her take the rap. I was afraid I'd lose her. What about the robbery? The killing? 
The guy got in my way. I got $9,000. What'd you do with the money, Harrison? Haskins got it. Why, he's crazy. He's out of his head. I am not. You said you let me escape. You tried to cross me. He's got it on him now. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Take him out to my office. Hey, Doc. Miss Harrison? Tell Jean that she got a big break tonight. She got rid of me. <laughs> Yeah, you finish this for me. Come in. Ah, oh, so you're getting ready to leave us, Doc. Yes, like most of the others here, I feel I've served my time. You know, some of that stuff's ours, isn't it? I was hoping you'd change your mind. Not me. I've had enough. I uh, don't suppose this would have anything to do with your going, would it? 